This is Heart Rhythm TV reporting live, wrapping up day number two of Heart Rhythm Society 2021 live sessions here in Boston. I have these wonderful ladies who are joining us today. These are the anchors for the Heart Rhythm TV. And I'll start with Eleni. What was the highlight today? Let's enlighten ourselves about diversity. Well, I love the powerful message that Dr. Yancey had about team and diversity. And the final phrase that he had about diversity is not a regression to the mean, it's a pathway to excellence, that stays with me. So I love that part of the, the plenary. That's wonderful. And Janet, yeah. did you happen to have a chance to attend it? Because I was on the flight. Yeah. I saw your Twitter feed. <laughs> it was outstanding. I think the thing that we have to remember, um, besides saying that it is not a regression to the mean, it is actually a true path to excellence, right? It's a path to excellence is what Dr. Yancey had said. We know that increasing diversity, inclusion, and equity in HRS and in all cardiovascular societies increases creativity, increases innovation, and increases better outcomes Absolutely. for patients, right? So, without a doubt. Without we have doubt. an example right here. We are all from <laughs> diverse, different backgrounds, so That's we right. can see it right here. Different professions. Yeah, these professions, yes. so yep. this is what is powerful. About. Yes, and talking about diversity, let's bring in Julie, who is our allied professional yep. anchor for the Heart Rhythm TV. So what do, you, what do you have to say? What did you learn today? So some great things happened with the allied professionals today. One of the highlights also with the plenary this morning is that many of the awards were presented and um, the Distinguished Allied Professional mm -hmm. Award was presented to Laurel Racenet, who I yeah. actually um, wow. you know, put up for the award because she's just a great person. She's been very dedicated to the Heart Rhythm Society for decades. Um, so I was really excited to see her get the award, uh, which was great fun. And another big highlight for today was that the Allied Council actually all came together for a luncheon. Um, ah. There were over 83 people oh at the luncheon. Wow. 83. 83 people. That's a lot of people. Um, a lot of newcomers, which was great to see them in Boston, particularly um, in light of the pandemic and everything. So it was great to see new people, new faces. Uh, Bryn Deckert, who is the AP Council Chair, mm -hmm. did a great overview of kind of what we did in 2021. You know, the AP Journal Club, the AP Competency document that we put together and, you know, looking forward to 2022, what we're going to be doing. So it was a great morning and a great Absolutely. luncheon. Exceptional, exceptional. Yeah. And then um, I have to mention, Dr. Sunny Jackman received the Distinguished Teacher, teacher yeah. Award. Right. Did yeah. you well all deserve, that? Well deserved. Well mm -hmm. deserved. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely yeah. well deserved. And also now, Mark, Mark Sweezy. Who that's yeah. right. Mark is another Sweezy. allied professional who um, has been, you know, at eight member of HRS for many, many, many years. That's absolutely and right. And he got the teach another one of the teacher awards. So it was great to see that. Phenomenal. Yep. And now uh, let's see if we have more anchors. We are not limited to just the four women here. We have wonderful men All who are going to join us over. and uh, they will enlighten us about the leg breaking clinical trials and more. We're yeah. balancing out the representation here. Right. Right. Thank you. And this has been such a fun, fun day. Thank you for taking the lead, Kamala. No, thank you. Clint, you went to a couple cool sessions as a fellow, our fellow representative. I did. Yeah, I am. Um, so the late breakers were awesome, but I really get a lot out of the educational sessions as a fellow, still building my skill set and everything in EP. So I went to one this morning about challenging VT cases with Usha Tedro mm -hmm. and with Dave Callens. And Usha talked about mid-myocardial substrate and lots of different strategies for reaching that substrate. Um, especially in non-ischemic patients, it's real important to take care of that population. Very yep. popular on Twitter, that one. Yeah, great. Yeah. Very popular. It was, yeah. And then Dave Collins talked a little bit about summit VTs and accessing that difficult area in different ways and sometimes even through the AIV and, and it had some great images and EGMs to show for that too. So really awesome session. I learned a lot. I'm glad that was very educational because as a fellow in training, that's what you need. And, uh, and Rod, um, what about the pause SCD? <laughs> <laughs> you were up on the stage. Yeah, it was a, it was a great busy day. Um, being in the Grand Ballroom was fantastic. Seeing people was the, was fantastic. As a fellow, you dream of presenting a late breaker, so I had the privilege of presenting the pan U.S. Sudden Cardiac Death Prevention Trial. And uh, we were able to demonstrate in an Asian population in 11, across 11 countries that early first-line VT ablation reduces the primary endpoint, which includes VT recurrence, cardiovascular hospitalization, and death. So it's, uh, it's a win for VT ablation. 
and it's the first to include non-ischemic cardiomyopathy. But I don't know how it was really received, John. Was uh, any comments on that? <laughs> well, I mean, there were so many great clinical trials today, and pause VT, I mean, incredible, 40% reduction, and then, you know, before that, stroke VT, so we know how to do VT ablation more safely. I think we're gonna have a lot of questions in the future about transeptal versus retrograde aortic and for which VTs. Um, and then as someone who loves uh, and is very interested in AFib a lot today, right? Spinal cord stimulation, cementing the you know autonomic evidence base, and then electrographic flow, are focal sources dead? You know, apparently not. And we have some new ways to map them, including the horn shunk optical technique, which was a new <laughs> vocabulary word for me today. Yeah, and that was in the innovation session, which was fantastic. I mean, EP is all about innovation, which is, which is great. Is stroke VT going to change practice? Mm, I don't know about changing the practice, but most of us, uh, we do transeptals, as you know, you know. I don't do retrogrades. I don't remember doing as many retrogrades mm -hmm. at all, so I don't know. What do you think? Do you think yeah. it's going to change your practice? Yeah, I think... Um, Probably in some people, maybe we might have to regress back, uh, not regress, I shouldn't say regress, go back to maybe remembering retrograde might be an option, right? Uh, I think that's part of it. I think the other thing I wanted to sort of talk about that we haven't touched on is WISE yes. CRT. Um, yes. That was in the innovation section as well, I believe. Jake Singh. Yeah, and then that that's great. So that's progressing. So they, they presented part of their trial that's ongoing, right? and they found that uh, over 40% of their patients improved by more than one NY NYHA class. And then, the other thing yes. is that they enrolled 42% women. 42% women, yeah. women, and remember, 42%. they were all, this is with a leadless LV pacemaker that incorporates into an existing device, but remember, most of them were non-responders, which is really impressive. That, to me, is, is, is unbelievable. The other one that I loved was the cryo ablation, which was ultra low cryo ablation, presented by Tom DePotter. Yes. And they had this really cool catheter that was malleable depending on the stylet. So it could actually give you linear, it could actually give you circle, loop, and loop. So they were able to do posterior wall, they were able to do linear. It really kind of takes us out of the rigidity of saying, oh, single shot versus point by point. It was really cool to see, and their success rate was. Unbelievably good, 85% for persistent AFib. And I, and I literally said as a hawk, it's unbelievable that it's 85% for persistent. But if that's the case, that's, it's, that's help us on the way. Absolutely. John, do you have anything else to add? Did we miss anything? What about the preview for tomorrow? Yeah, no, so tomorrow is really exciting, right? So I think every day has been incredible here. But tomorrow to hear, starting out with Dr. Cox from the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory, I think that's going to be very inspirational um, and I think she's going to be speaking about determination and on the science side to get to hear the next uh, chapter of the cabana story and the economic uh, you know data and then getting the heart failure data from east I think is going to be really really interesting and we had some great publications that came out of today as well you know look for stroke VT you can read the full manuscript in Jackie P simultaneous pub so that's exciting. And then the YCRT Rolling with JAG was published in Heart Rhythm today as well, which is great. You know, the other one is the conduction system pacing, left bundle branch area pacing with Parikh Sharma. And that was striking because even though non-randomized, you know, almost over 300 patients in each arm, they saw mortality, you know, a hint at mortality benefit compared to regular standard pacing. So it's all exciting stuff. There was an explosion of new science today. That's wonderful, and I think, you know, let's look forward to tomorrow, day number three, and join us at Heart Rhythm TV tomorrow, and uh, thank you for joining us, and we appreciate our wonderful support team here.